Hello to our Pleasant Green Church family and our listeners. Uh, indeed, it is a pleasure again to share the Word of God uh, and our study. And uh, from our Faith Pathway Study Manual, uh, this is Lesson 5 for October the 4th, 2020. Uh, still from Unit 2, titled Inclusive Love. And this Sunday's lesson is A True Friend Intervenes. A True Friend Intervenes. And our devotional reading is from the book of Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses 43 through 48. And our background scripture is 1 Samuel, the 19th chapter, verses 1 through 7, and then 23, 1 through 18, and then 2 Samuel, the chapter, the 9th chapter of 2 Samuel. And our printed passage is 1 Samuel, the 19th chapter, verses 1 through 7. And our key verse is the fourth verse of 1 Samuel, the 19th chapter. And it reads, and I'm reading from the NIV, and it says, Jonathan spoke well of David to Saul, his father, and said to him, Let not the king do wrong to his servant David. He has not wronged you. And what he has done has benefited you greatly. Now our lesson's aims are Explore the story of Jonathan's defense of David when David was opposed by Saul. Long for love and justice within the family and beyond, and grow in your love for devotion to justice for others. These are our lesson's aims. And I would like to lift out of the uh, first selection of our lessons aims where it says explore the story of Jonathan's defense of David when David was opposed by Saul. Uh, that was not that David opposed Saul but David was opposed by Saul. And this lesson is uh, divided into two parts, and the first part is a friend's strategy, a friend's strategy, and that is the 19th chapter of 1 Samuel verses 1 through 3, and then the second part is a friend's appeal, and that is the continuance of our reading, uh, 1 Samuel, the 19th chapter, and now verses 4 through 7. And that would be the conclusion of the study and reading of our lesson for this Sunday. And as always, our prayer is, is that the study and the reading and the speaking of the Word of God would accomplish the purpose for which it was sent and not return unto God void. And so our prayer is, is that what we learn from this lesson, that we would not just be hearers of it alone, but in fact, we would become doers of the Word which we hear. Now, our lesson again is entitled A True Friend 
intervenes. And much uh, can be said about uh, friendship. And our lesson today is focused on how a friend engages and how a friend's behavior is displayed and depicted for us in this uh, study and not just spoken verbally in words but by the friend's action. The friend did something which demonstrated the depth of his friendship towards David in the place of Jonathan. And um, it has been said that he who has found a friend has found a treasure. Um, and there are many verses, uh, particularly speaking from the book of Proverbs, uh, that give wisdom into the behavior and the actions and the display of love uh, in the relationship of friendship. But uh, one in particular, which would be quite familiar uh, to many of us, is the 18th uh, chapter of Proverbs and the 24th verse, uh, which is wise instruction for all of us who have friendship and for those who are seeking friendship. And it says that if one is seeking friendship, he or she must first show themselves to be friendly. Uh, which kind of tells us that uh, if you're looking for friendship, then you must first demonstrate friendship. And then it goes on to give us the ultimate example of friendship, for it says that there is one who sticks closer than a brother, uh, speaking of Christ. And so uh, the first thing we recognize in, in our quest uh, for true friendship, uh, for fulfilling friendship and relationships with one another is as first, we have to be an example of that kind of friendship. We have to demonstrate it. And through our demonstration, we have set forth a model. We've set forth an example of what real friendship is. Now, as we indulge into our lesson, and uh, the first part of it, uh, I would just like to read that uh, to set the tone uh, for the uh, support through Scripture, validating what Jonathan says in the beginning part of our lesson. And so uh, Jonathan, and I'm reading from the NIV, uh, and he says that, his father, Saul, told his son, Jonathan, and all of his servants and attendants to kill David. But Jonathan had taken a great liking to David. And he warned David and he said, my father, Saul, is looking for a chance to kill you. Be on your guard tomorrow morning and go into hiding and stay there. And I will go out and stand with my father in the field where you are. And I'll speak to him about you and will tell you what I find out. Now this is the strategic planning that Jonathan made uh, spoke to uh, David, and this uh, was an example of his love and appreciation for the friendship that had developed between him and David. 
And when we look at this now, sometimes we say uh, relative to uh, friends that uh, birds of a feather flock together. Uh, which when we put in plain terms uh, says to us that we sometimes connect with people of like-mindedness. And so we have certain characteristics in common, certain qualities in common, and they are attractive one to the other. And so we find someone who is similar to ourselves and we are drawn to that person. And when we uh, look back in the 14th chapter of Samuel, uh, Jonathan displays a certain quality and a certain practice. Uh, he and his armor bearer, Jonathan proposes a question to his armor bearer that the Lord was with them and on their side. And so they chose to go into the camp of the enemy, uh, the Assyrians. They chose to go in among them and then do battle. I'm sorry, not the Assyrians, the Philistines, the Philistines. Uh, they chose to go into enemy camp and to do battle with the Philistines. And not knowing uh, what the outcome would be, but trusting that the God of Israel would be on their side and would be in battle with them. And so Jonathan speaking to his armor barrier about his tactics of how he thought they should go about this. And his armor bearer said unto him to do whatever you choose in the favor of the Lord and the Lord would be with thee. And so, uh, so Jonathan then, they go into the camp of the, of the Philistines following his strategic plan and he became victorious with it. And so uh, one of the things that was like manner or was uh, a, a, a practice or quality that was similar, which attracted and drew Jonathan to David was the fact that uh, their engagement against the enemy. Uh, their fearless engagement against the enemy and their trust in the God that they served that if they went into battle with the uh, support and, and with the, the uh, covering and with the blessing of God with them that they would be victorious. And then, because of their trust in God, then they were willing to sacrifice their lives if it was in the favor and will of God, trusting that God would bring them out victoriously. And so, Jonathan had taken a liking unto David, and it says that they were like soulmates that their souls were knitted together because they had unifying characteristics. And so one of the things that we find out uh, about David is uh, in the 16th chapter. And here we find that it appeared at first that David would be overlooked, but the prophet, the judge, Samuel, when he went unto Jesse to search uh, for the king, he looked at Jesse's sons, and as he sought out all of them, he realized that the one that the Lord has sent me to find is not among these. But I know 
that the Lord has not made a mistake. Therefore, there must be another son. Is there one who is not present? And then Jesse said, oh, that's our youngest boy. Uh, he's out attending the sheep. And that in itself uh, is a quality that we find later in the 10th chapter of John where Christ is teaching about the difference between a shepherd and a hireling. A shepherd and a hireling. And he says that he is the good shepherd. So David has some qualities that were also similar to the spirit of Christ. So here David is out attending the sheep. And Samuel says, bring in the youngest one. And as soon as he sees David, he says, now this is the one. And he speaks of him as though the spirit of the Lord came upon David. And from that day forward. So uh, Samuel fulfills the charge that was given to him by the spirit of God. And when he sees David, he knows it is fulfilled. Now, one of the things that we look here, and that uh, is concluding at the 13th verse of the 16th chapter of First Samuel. But starting in at the 14th verse of the 16th chapter of First Samuel. Now, after... Uh, Samuel chooses David and then scripture tells us that the spirit of the Lord was upon him there was another spirit that was present and that spirit was a distressing and a troubling and a puzzling spirit and in the 14th verse of the 16th chapter of 1 Samuel it tells us that uh, at, at the uh, concluding of David's choosing and then the uh, kind of simultaneously, uh, it speaks about how Saul, he began to be troubled and distressed by the spirit. Um, on one hand, the spirit is uplifting for David, but on another hand, when Saul hears of this, now Saul's spirit is troubled. And so as Saul's uh, uh, demeanor, as Saul's countenance is, it is recognized by his attendants, well then he, uh, they advise him and say, uh, we can tell that your spirit is distressing and troubled, but there's a healing. And uh, if you can find a person who plays a harp, a stringed instrument, that it is soothing to the soul and says that uh, if you uh, can find me a servant who provides such a skill, one who plays well, bring him to me. And so the servants went out and sought and they said, look, we have found the son of Jesse uh, from Bethlehem. And he is skillful in playing an instrument. He's a man of valor. He's a man of war. He's prudent in speech. He's handsome. He's the man that you need. And so Saul sends for him and then David begins to play the instrument and it soothes Saul's spirit. And so uh, whenever this troubling, uh, puzzling and distressing spirit came upon Saul, then Saul would call David and then David would play the instrument and would soothe Saul's soul and remove this distress that he was encountering. 
And this was in the early settings, uh, giving us a uh, an awareness of how Saul was troubled from the beginning as soon as he learned that David had been chosen by the Spirit of God to lead Israel. And so uh, when we hear of this, uh, it lets us know of how Saul finally gets to the point of wanting to kill David because while on one hand it was rewarding and a fulfillment by Samuel on one hand uh, the choosing of David on the other hand it was not as rewarding and soothing for Saul. So when we come into the 17th chapter we need to look at what led up to the 19th chapter. And in your spare time and in your reading, you should read into the 17th chapter, uh, where now all of Israel is confronted with the Philistines and they bring out their champion. And uh, those of us who know the biblical stories know the story of Goliath, the champion of the Philistines, who had caused all of Israel to be afraid of. And David, the youngest of the Israelites, David does not take it as a fearful thing, but takes it as a courageous situation where he is able to show that the God of Israel the true God, the God that he professes in, is able to make him victorious even over the greatest opposition of the enemy. Bring forth your best, and I come as a servant of the Lord of Israel, and I believe that he will make me victorious over your greatest champion as an opposition to the true worship of the true God. And as we know, David defeated Goliath. And uh, when we read through this here, again, the word goes out. Now, even David's brothers uh, had a friction uh, when David mentioned about he would take on this champion. And they thought that David was being, the scripture says, insolence insolent and that he was being proud he was being arrogant he was being disrespectful uh and so uh david uh said that it was not any of those motives but that what was what uh, uh motivated him to take this on was is that it was the cause that was present and that was why he was there. And it was not uh, to uh, avail himself, but it was that there is this opposition, this opposing force here. And I believe that God will enable me under God's power to overcome this obstacle. And so now when the word got to Saul, and this is in the 17th chapter of first Samuel uh, coming down around the 31st verse on to about the 37th verse and it says here that when Saul heard about it he told his servants to well bring this one before me and uh, it came up that uh, well he's only been attending sheep uh, how can he go out against this great warrior and what uh, David said was, is that while I was attending the sheep, sometimes there were lions that were present. And uh, I had to distract the lion from harming the sheep. And the Lord allowed me and strengthened me to kill the lion who was coming to harm the sheep. And sometimes there were bears that were present and they came to harm the sheep. 
And the Lord again enabled me and equipped me to kill the bear with my bare hands and uh, to stop the bear and the lion from devouring the sheep. And so if the God that I serve would equip me to kill the lion and the bear to preserve and keep the sheep, surely the God will allow me to kill, and he used this term, this uncircumcised Philistine. And so that's uh, another part of the setting here. Now, as we proceed further into uh, still leading up to the 19th, when we come into this now in the 18th uh, chapter, here is where Jonathan it says that uh, his soul was knitted unto David uh, because Jonathan loved him uh, and saw him as himself, as his own soul. And then Jonathan gave unto him his armor and his sword and, and his bow and his belt. And he bowed before David and he recognized that he was the heir to the throne. But he honored David because he saw the spirit of God descending and present in David. And so he was willing to give up his uh, heritage to the seat to be the king. He was willing to step aside and show his submission and honor and obedience unto David and let David come forth. So when we look here at the beginning of the uh, 18th chapter, uh, Saul, he now recognizes David and uh, he wants to honor David for killing Goliath. And uh, he uh, gives David charge over men in the service. And as they go out into battle with the, uh, with the Philistines and they return victorious. Well, as they were coming back into the camp, the women was celebrating. And here again uh, begins another display of Saul's attitude towards David and his valor. But when they returned, the women began to sing a song and they say that Saul kills thousands, but David killed ten thousands. And Saul, when he heard the words of the song in the celebration as they returned in victory, he began, he beca the scripture says he became very angry. And what happens is, is that he begins to think of David as himself. And, and here is uh, the background scripture. Will we read in Matthew, the fifth chapter, verses 43 through 48. It talks about how that those who are endowed with the spirit of God, that they don't act like the normal people. They don't just speak to people that they know, but they speak to people they don't know. They don't just act like tax collectors and publicans. Uh, they don't just do good to those that do good to themselves, but they do good to all people. And so here, Saul begins to think of David as himself. He begins to say, well now, if David, the people are saying that David killed more people than I did. Now, if that was me, I would start thinking, hey, I think I should be king. I think I should run things. I think I should take over here. So he begins to react to David based upon his own nature and based upon the behavior and thought process of himself. He doesn't recognize that David 
is guided by the spirit of God. And so he then begins to strategize on, okay, so, so how can I make David uh, endeared to me? And here he begins to use his daughters. And the first daughter that he chose to be wed unto David in the course of his frustration and his fear, he doesn't even remember that his first daughter has already been married off to another man in the service. And so uh, he then finds out as he's seeking counsel that uh, his servants let him know that his daughter, Michael, that she loved David. And so then David was actually happy about this. Uh, he, he saw this as a great opportunity here. So then he says, well, uh, what I'll do since uh, she loves David, and uh, uh, this would be a perfect mate then uh, for David then. I'll give him my second daughter, Michael. And uh, this will be a wedding blessed in heaven. And But even though through the celebration and even though he entered into this arrangement as though this was going to soothe and quiet and calm his, his, uh, uh, his anticipation of being overtaken or uh, being uh, blindsided uh, by David's success. Even though he used the marriage of his daughter to try and make it where uh, David uh, would not try and overtake him, he still was scheming and plotting and planning. So even with the marriage of his daughter, he then sends David out on a quest of territory among the Philistines, and he sends David out now with less men. And then he charges David, and he says, bring back to me the foreskins of the Philistines uh, with less men to fight with. But he thinks now that even though I be wedded him to my daughter. When he goes out for this quest, he will surely be taken in battle. And then David again, he's obedient. He follows the instructions of Saul. Uh, he doesn't uh, show any uh, argument or dismay in what he was asked to do. He serves in obedience. And he comes back victorious. He brings the foreskins of the Philistines back unto Saul. And again, Saul is fearful because he again recognizes that this man is being favored by the Spirit of God. And rather than acknowledge it and honor it and welcome it, he becomes fearful of it and plots to kill David. And that is what leads us up to the 19th chapter. And to conclude with this, here is where verses 4 through 7, this is where Jonathan begins to bring up all the things that David had done for him. He tells him in verses 4 that it would be wrong for the king to kill your servant because what has your servant done unto you except for everything he has done when he played the harp for you? It was to ease your troubling mind. When he killed the Philistine, it was to bring honor to Israel. When, when he was sent out on battle, he did that to defeat the Philistines to secure homeland for Israel, for you, the king. 
Why would you want to do wrong to this man who has done nothing but try to benefit you and to make make uh, Israel more secure? And so here is where the true friendship is displayed in Jonathan because Jonathan intervenes on behalf of David and then tells his father and explains to his father that it would be wrong for him to kill an innocent man like this. Now, he doesn't say this, but just imagine that now all of Israel is honoring David and then to find out that there was some scheme behind the death of David, what would Saul had heaped upon himself then once the word got out? And sometimes when we are scheming and strategizing and thinking is behind closed doors and nobody knows, uh, remember, God knows all. He sees all. And then what we think is done in the dark, somehow the Spirit of God knows how to bring it into the light. And so uh, here Saul was not thinking of this, but his son Jonathan intervenes and brings to his mind that look at the example of what David has done for you. And at this point, the last verse tells us that Jonathan called David and he told him the conversation that he had with his father, Saul. And then he brought him to Saul. And it says that Saul received David as it was before. At those occasions when he was joyful and excited to see David in his presence. And that is how the scripture ends. Uh, but we know that's not the end of the scheme of Saul. But this is just giving us one example of the true practice of true friendship demonstrated and exemplified by Jonathan. And as always, we hope that uh, what was said gives us some insight into what are the expectations of God upon us as believers and followers of the teachings of the Spirit of God. So as always, our prayer goes with you that we will not just be hearers of the Word of God, but doers as well. God bless you and God keep you.